Hey Snowboard Addiction, Tavis here. And today, with the help of our filmer Harry, we're going to show you how we set up our action cams and how we capture our footage for our tutorials. So we're going to be going over fall camming jumps, fall camming rails, and just all the nitty gritty that helps make Snowboard Addiction videos as high quality as they are. Gear changes how you want to shoot. If you're using your phone, you want to switch to the 0.5 mode. This will replicate the action cam effect. This will work, but it's less consistent compared to using an action cam, which is specific for sports. This is why we're rocking the DJI Osmo Action 4 here. We have this mounted to a long pole here. This allows us to get as close as we can to the rider whilst being safe. A few other accessories we're using here is a battery pack to keep the camera rolling for as long as possible and for a four day shoot. But you can use Osmo batteries which come in a handy rechargeable case which you can flip out and switch the battery so you're never missing a shot throughout the day. And then we've also got these ND filters here. This basically adds a little bit more motion blur to the shot, making it a little bit more cinematic and look more professional. Majority of the time when we're filming snowboard videos, we're recording tutorials. So we want to make sure that we mic up the rider so we can get professional sounding audio. This is when we're using the DJI Mic 2. The good thing about this is it connects directly to the Action 4 without any extra cables, making the setup nice and clean. First of all, we're gonna cover what everyone thinks of when they think of fall camming, and that's fall camming off a jump. Fall camming off a jump is really a preemptive prep game. So you're gonna wanna meet a few things before fall camming your homie off a jump. First of all, you need to know what side of a jump your friend's hitting. Say they're spinning like a bad side free, figure out that they're spinning right side up to take off so goofy back free, and then find out how much they think they're gonna drift. Because if someone's going and drifting across the jump, it's going to go and make it so we need more speed hitting it, where you're just going to be doing a straight air, so you don't want to collide with them in the air. So what I do is I ask my friends what side of a jump you're hitting, and then I'll be going and riding off that same side of a jump as them, and then going straight as I drip the other direction. The other thing you need to keep in mind is when people spin, they go and lose a little bit more speed than you do on a straight air. So if you try to follow cam your homie who's doing a drifty spin off the jump, and you hit it with the same speed, they're going to go big and overshoot what will go and be a little bit scary and risk messing up the jump. So what you wanna do is get really comfortable with the jump hitting sweet spot every time. That way your homie will do their thing and you will stay as close as you can with them on the ideal track of the jump, hitting the side that they're on so when they drift away, you can just float over, hit sweet spot and hopefully keep them in the thought the whole way. If you're enjoying our videos, then make sure to come and check out Addiction Plus. It is the best snowboard coaching program in the world. As a member of Addiction Plus, you get access to our structured snowboard courses that range from beginner to expert, and you can track your progression, weekly live coaching sessions with us, upload your own videos for analysis of your writing, personalized feedback to help you fast track your progression, and the ability to attend our in-person events. Addiction Plus is incredible value and the most effective way for you to fast track your writing. Come join us now. So another way you can film jumps is following off a roller instead of filming off a jump. This requires a slightly different approach because if you were going to ride over a roller at the same speed as the rider going over a jump, you will fly to flat. So here you want to change your angle of approach. As you're approaching the roller of a jump, try to stay towards the most right or left side depending on which side of a roller you're hitting. This allows you to carve to the center of the knuckle, increasing your travel time, so you're scrubbing your speed, but not losing too much speed so you can still track the rider and keep them in frame. This makes for quite an interesting shot, because as the rider comes over the jump, you will be like underneath them. Start slightly lower down from the rider. Before the rider sets off, set off like literally just a second before they set off and let the rider ride towards the jump and follow them as close as possible. And then you can track them as they go over the jump and then they'll be over the top of you and then tracking down to make sure that you get the landing. If they're spinning front side, you wanna be on the right side of the rider. If they're, if they're spinning Backside, you want to be on the left side of a rider. This will be the same, but the opposite way around if they're regular. So the main thing we're trying to achieve when we're following jumps is to stay slightly ahead of a rider. 
And when we're on the rollers, we want to get as much under the rider as possible. Then filming rails, it is even more important to stay ahead of the rider because this will just make the rail trick look so much better. When I'm about to film a rider on a rail, again, I'm setting off slightly before them, setting my dropping point slightly lower down. This will allow me to stay ahead of a rider. And also as a filmer, you have more control of putting speed checks in as a rider will need to set the speed to perform the trick. We're here now at a rail section. We're going to have the same approach as a jump. I'm slightly ahead of Tavis right now. This will allow me to shoot back at Tavis, giving the most interesting shot. You'll see as I ride through this section, I'm going to be doing small speed checks and quick head movements to make sure Tavis is in frame and I'm controlling my speed. And as a rider, I'm going to communicate with Harry what tricks I'm doing. So I'm going to do a gap to 50-50, a front board to a front lip. So both tricks will look better from the left just since I'm goofy. So that's something I want to communicate to the filmer so they know what angle will look best when we shoot it. As a filmer, we can be making small speed checks all the time. And we also want to be making quick head movements, looking to check that we're not riding into the rail, but also looking behind us to check that we're keeping the rider in frame at all times. Generally, when I'm filming snowboarding, I like to keep the camera pointed towards the rider's hips. This will generally keep the rider in frame at all times. So that's sort of a consideration you can make whenever you're filming snowboarding. Keep the camera pointed towards the rider's hips and that will sort of guarantee that the rider is always in frame. I'm now going to run through some of our favourite settings we use when filming snowboarding to get the most dialed king shots possible. You'll see here that we've got the camera set to 4K 60. This allows us to capture the best resolution possible and also allows us to slow down the footage in the edit. You'll also see that we've got the set to 4.3, which basically gives us the most flexible aspect ratio to reframe the footage for use on Instagram and TikTok. If you're just filming for socials, you can use the nifty magnetic system. Here, it's super easy to switch from horizontal mode to vertical mode for when you're filming for socials. Now we're going into the settings dashboard, and switching to the pro mode, we can adjust things such as exposure, white balance, and color. For exposure, we're following the 180 degree shutter rule. This essentially means that we're doubling our frame rates for our shutter speed. So we're shooting at 60 FPS, meaning that we need to adjust our shutter speed to one over 120. This gives the most true to eye look and gives a nice sense of motion blur. For this, it requires you to use these ND filters here to cancel out some of the harsh lights. You can also see that we've got the white balance set to 5500 Kelvin. And for our color mode, we've got the set to D-Log M 10 bit. This allows us for the most flexibility when color grading the footage. And finally, for the field of view, we've got the set to wide, allowing us to capture all the action. Full Academy is an awesome snowboard challenge, so keep pushing yourselves and get creative with it. Your homies will be stoked to the results. And it's not just a challenge for your filmer. As a rider, it takes great skill to go and capture a shot. So if your filmer ever asks you for a clip, practice your follow camming so you can deliver and make them just as stoked up as they get you. I'm Taylor from Snowboard Addiction. I'm Harry from Snowboard Addiction. And our goal is to improve your riding.